Okay, and welcome to the second example of Lewis dot structures and molecular geometry. So given a molecule, we're going to be able to write its Lewis dot structure and use that to determine its molecular geometry. So the molecule we're working with right now is CO2, covalent again. This is carbon dioxide. Okay, so we know and we have to start by determining the number of valence electrons that each one's bringing to the party. So carbon, group four brings four. And each oxygen is going to bring six. So multiply that by two means that carbon is bringing four. Total oxygens is bringing 12. Adding those up, we've got 16 valence electrons to play with. Next step, we're going to, oops, better hurry up. Okay, next step, we're going to determine the central atom. Central atom is the one that there's only one. And draw the other atoms surrounding it, equally spaced approximately. So now we know that we're going to have a minimum of two dots to make a single bond, because a single bond has two electrons. Double is going to be twice that. Oops. If I could write four electrons and a triple, it's going to have two more than that, so six electrons. Okay, so looking at this, we've got 16 electrons to work with. We've already used four to make the bonds, so that gives 12 left. So let's fill out our octet for carbon. Okay, and that used four more, so we're down to eight. One. And let's try to fill out our octets for our oxygens. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh-oh, seven, eight, and then suddenly we're out. And we don't have enough electrons to fill up all of the octets. So what are we supposed to do? Well, in this case, now we're going to start moving these electrons around. And we're going to start by um, moving some of these electrons and start making double bonds. So redraw the molecule. And what happens if we just have one single bond and one double bond and try it again? So right now, this oxygen has access to one, two, three, four. So it just needs five, six, seven, eight. Uh, this carbon has one, two, three, four, five, six. So it needs two more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16. Ah, this oxygen still doesn't have enough. It only has, this oxygen only has six. It needs eight. Just like this one only had four, it needs eight. So we're going to try it again. And let's try two double bonds this time. One on each side. Okay, so now we've used up, we started with 16, and we've used up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got half of them left, eight electrons left. OK, and carbon in this configuration is totally happy. It's totally got its eight. It's got its eight. Its octet is full. This one has four. It needs two, three, four more. This one also needs four more. And wouldn't you know it, that's eight. So we're all set. Let's double check this oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's set. This oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's all set. And of course, the carbon in these covalent bonds, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is all set. So if we were going to write this, representing these as lines, it would look like this. There's our double bond and we'd still have our electrons kind of spread out as far as possible. And the fun thing with this and molecular geometries is that these double bonds kind of lock this carbon in place. And so we know if it's got this many lone pairs and this many pairs of double bonds, that this molecular geometry is called 
linear. This is going to be in a straight line and if you pull out your model sets and you try to model this you're going to see that it can't bend at all. The only way that this would bend is if there's lone pairs on the central atom which we have no lone pairs on the central atom. We have lone pairs on the ends. Those don't really count. So this is linear locked in place.